magnet. In this video, I show you how we can create an image panel. That's a J panel that includes an image and how we can control it from our J frame. So here's my little skateboarder. Right now I select it to change the color. If I say go, it's changing my color. If I say move, it's going to move and I can change my color and move it on a red, red background. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new image panel. Here is my J panel. I'm going to call it image panel. And I'm also going to create a new J frame. It is right above here. And I'm going to call this demo image panel. And uh, right now when I run my program, I can see that it is just an empty uh, J frame. Now let's have a look at our image panel. What I would like to do in my image panel is the following. I would like to draw my little skateboarder. In order to do that, I need my skateboarder. I'm going to create a separate folder. That's a best practice, not to mix your resources like images with your Java source code. So I create a folder, I call it images. And inside my image folder, I'm just making this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Inside my image folder, I'm going to include an image and I have mine stored in a folder. I'm going to browse to it. It's right here in my tools in my temp folder. So here it is. I'm selecting my skateboarder, no top folder because I'm using my images as top folder and I finish. And there it is. There's my skateboarder. There is an advantage if you use an image with a transparent background, it blends in more nicely. And um, mine is about 128 times 128 or something like that. So a smaller image. If you use a bigger image, you need to create a bigger uh, window to display it nicely. So here I am, I have my J panel and I would like to draw my skateboarder. The way I do that is like this, I'm going to uh, overwrite my paint component. So here is my paint component. It's going to call the paint component from the super class to start out with. And now I'm going to create a image icon. So here is my image icon. Uh, I just call it icon and uh, give me a little import statement here in Java X Swing is a no image icon. And we're going to create this image icon based on the skateboarder PNG. So here I'm going to use my uh, class image panel dot class dot get resource. And we're going to enter the path. So here is my, um, I'm going to make the, the site a little bit bigger for a moment. Uh, my path is GUI image panel. This is my package right here. Uh, GUI image panel. And then I need my folder, which is images. You can see we're going to require a little bit more space. So here is my images. And now there's the file name. File name is skateboarder.bng. And here we are, skateboarder.bng. And at the end, we need a semicolon. Uh, at this point, I have an image icon and I want to paint that. So I say icon dot and there is a paint icon uh, method. It says give me the component. The component that I want to paint is this very J panel. Uh, give me the graphics component. We have it right here and give me the position. And I would say 50 from the left and 50 from the top. So here I'm going to call my paint icon it's this very component. It's my graphics component called G. So same name here. And my X is, let's say, 50 from the left and my Y is 50 from the top. And at that point, I would like to see this panel run. In order to see it run, I need to include it in my J frame. So here is my J frame. And what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to include a J panel. There's two ways to do that. I could just go to my designer view and in my designer view 
I could uh, then we just minimize this side so we have a little bit more space and we can actually see the whole uh, GUI here. I could just grab a shape handle, put that in my center and when I go to my source code I'm going to change that. I don't really want any shape handle. I want my special shape handle. Remember my image handle is a shape handle and this is the kind of a shape handle I want. So here I say I want to have an image handle and uh, I'm calling this my um, image handle. Why not? And I'm going to add this very image handle in the center of my shape frame. Let's look how this is going to display. And here is my little skateboard. And so I say, well, we uh, can see it already. I would also like to have some control so we can do something with our skate, uh, skateboarder. So I'm going back to my design view. In my design view, I'm going to select my um, content pane. We have the image panel in the center. What I would like a second panel, a control panel in my south area of my uh, layout. So here is my control panel. I'm changing the name to control panel and I'm going to add some radio buttons. At this point I'm going to close the containers and the layouts and I'm going to take a radio button and I place it in my control panel. I call my first radio button change color because it's going to change the background color. This is the radio button I would like to have selected by default. So when I look, it has a selected checkbox. I say this is true when the window opens. And then I would like to have a second radio button. My second radio button is called move because it's going to make the little guy move. I also want to have a, a J button. This is my go button. So depending on which option it is, is selected at a given time, it will either change the color or move the skateboarder. At this point, I want to run my program and validate that everything still works nicely. And there I am, I have my skateboarder and I have my control panel change color is selected by default. Now is a good time to go to the source code and refactor. Uh, you might notice that our constructor has been grown already quite a bit. So let me make this part a little bit bigger. I can see I have my image panel in the center and all kinds of stuff happening in the south. This is my control panel. I like to move the line where I add my south panel to the south part of the border layout to the very end. And I'm going to extract a method that takes care of my control panel. Alt Shift M. This is going to extract the method. I call it create control panel. And uh, here I have a method, a private method that takes care of all my control panel. And when I look at my constructor, I can see we have the image panel in the center and we're creating the control panel in the south. At this point, I want to make sure all my code runs as it did before and I can validate this is the case. At this point, I'm ready to move to my image panel and I want to uh, create an array that has a limited number of colors we're going to rotate through. So here is a private field. It's of type color. It's an array of colors. I call it colors. And I'm going to allow certain colors. Let's say color orange and color blue and color red. Those are my colors. And I would also, uh, here I can see and we need a little import statement for our colors. I would also like to set a color for my um, skateboarder at the very beginning and I can do that right here. I could do something like set background and I'm going to set the first color of my um, array colors. So here is my first color. Um, let's just see how this is going to look like. I'm going to run my program and when I do so I can see I have a skateboarder on my orange background. At this point, we're going to create a method that allows us to uh, change the color from the shape frame. So it needs to be public. It returns nothing, which means it's void. And I just give it the, the name change color. Um, 
what we are going to do is the following. We are going to update um, an index as we rotate through our colors. We start at 0, 1, 2. Now it's important after 2, I want to go back to 0. One way to do that is the following. I can create a field that's private integer. This is my color index. And at the beginning, it is 0. I could have used this very color index for my first color uh, because it happens to be 0. There would be no change. But when I call the method change color, uh, that would happen in the event handler of my go button. Then this color index needs to be updated. It needs to be increased unless it is the highest index. In that case, it needs to be reset. So here is my color index. And I'm going to assign it the incremented color index. And I'm using modulus to make sure that we don't um, end up with an index that's too big for our array. Now that we have the updated index, I'm going to use that to set the background color of our uh, image panel. So here we are going to use from our colors array the color on the specified index. And I have at this point a method, a public method that can be used from my go button event handler. So let's go back to our J frame. Let's make sure the go button is selected. I can see here button go. And I use the icon right here to um, switch to my events. I want to have the action performed event. I double click performed. And this uh, creates an event handler in my uh, go button. So inside my um, go button, in, uh, I'm going to check whether my radio button change color is selected. So if that is the case, only if that is the case, then I want to, ch uh, to call the uh, change color method of my image panel. So here you can see I have my image panel. I would like to change the color of my image panel, but I get a red wiggly line. It's a reminder that my image panel is not in scope. Image panel is a local variable inside my constructor and I want to use it in my event handler. To be able to do that, I need to change that to a field. I right click, I choose the factor and there's an option convert local variable to a field. We just leave the default settings. Notice the uh, image panel is just used. It's no longer declared in my constructor. And when you click up here, you can see the image panel is now a field of my JFrame. I'm going back down to my event handler. At this point, the image panel should be accessible and I can uh, get this auto completion of the different options that I have. What I would like to do is I would like to change the color. And um, at this point, I want to try it out. I'm going to run the program. I have my skateboarder right here. I have change color selected. And when I say go, it's nicely rotating through my colors. The next thing I would like to do is to make my little guy move. So I move, I get, I go back to my image panel and I add a second method. My second method is public again because we need to call it in our event handler from the JFrame and it's called move. What this method should do is it should move this little uh, skateboarder. Right now we are on fixed position 50, but I want to make this more flexible. So I create a private field of type integer and I see my X at the beginning is 50. So again, I could just say, well, let's start at X, whatever my X is. And then whenever we call the move method, increase the X, make it bigger, let's say by 10. When we call the method set background, the uh, GUI was already aware that set background needs to repaint in order to make a new color. When I change a local variable, the GUI doesn't realize that we would like it to repaint, but we need to repaint in order to have the icon appear on this new updated X. So we need to uh, make this explicit. I just call the repaint uh, method. So be careful, do not call paint component. That would be very poor practice. If you want the component to be repainted, just call repaint and let 
and swing with him how the different parts of the brain to be repainted. We should probably have a little comment that's a best practice as you move skate border to the right. And here we could have another doc comment that says changes background color. Now we have the move method and I want to make sure uh, we can actually use that in our GUI. So I'm switching back to our shape frame. I'm going to my design view and I want to do something when my move button is selected. Now the move button is a radio button. It's selected, but really the action is happening again by the triggering of my go. Uh, it happens still in the same uh, event handler that we have already of our go button. So I go to my source and in my source code, I can see we have checked already if the radio button change color is selected to one thing. If the radio button uh, move is selected, let's do that here. If my radio button move is selected, then something else should happen. Uh, what should happen is my image panel should be moved. So here we are and I'm going to run my program just like this. Here is my little guy. I have my change color, it changes color. And when I say move, it's going to move. Now I have both buttons still uh, selected. Notice how both things are happening. That really shouldn't be the case. So here it's moving only. We're nearly finished. The last thing we need to do is we need to make sure not both of my radio buttons can be selected at the same time. The way I ensure that my radio buttons are mutually exclusive is by creating a button group. I select both of the radio buttons or all of my radio buttons that should be in the same button group. I right click and I create a button group. I use the standard button group that's just perfectly fine for our purpose. You can see it right here. And when I go to my source code, I can see that uh, both my change color button and my uh, move button were added to the same button group. So when I run it again, only one radio button can be uh, selected at any given time. The moment I change move, my change color is unselected and the other way around.